All right, so in my last video, um, this was first drive, we had this problem getting into first or second gear uh, was difficult. And in fact, I couldn't even get into first at all. Um, and I believe I figured out the problem and I just wanna go over that. So it's kind of hard to see, but this is the neutral position. So I can get into third and fourth just fine. The shifter is already sitting way far to the left. So I can't push it any very far to the left to get it into first. That's still third. Uh, but if I force it, I can just barely get into second. This is something that I could have noticed earlier had I paid a little bit more attention. So I needed new shift cables and the 93, sorry, the 96 and 97 shift cables were no longer available. However, the 98, 99, and 2000 shift cables were still available. I figured they had to be pretty similar, so I just went ahead and ordered them. They fit well enough and they hooked onto everything, but one small issue I had was getting the clips in. If you notice, that black part here is actually a spacer, it's like a shim. This is a 1998 to 2000 RAV4 shifter. Now, it is plastic. Um, versus this one being all stamped steel metal, which turns a lot of people off from this. If we imagine this needs to go further to the left, that means that this distance on the cable needs to be shorter, which would move this closer rearward, which would move this further to the left in the neutral position. And same, same with the fore and aft cable, um, but to a lesser extent. Now, if we look at the, the updated shifter, that distance is actually a fair bit shorter. So I believe that this is the only modification I need to do in order to get my first and second gears back. All right, so it's dark at this point, but um, that was it. That was the only part this swap actually needed was um, this assembly just swapped straight in bolts in um, even these clips align here on the shifter tower assembly thing so uh, that was pretty easy um, and if that's all that needed then I won't be complaining so I finally have all the gears um, I know some people will uh, freak out that I switched away from a metal shifter to a plastic shifter um, to that I say uh, I just saved 650 grams but in actuality, this actually ends up feeling a lot better than the metal shifter, surprisingly. Um, at, at least it's less worn out than mine. Um, mine was fairly worn out. I could move this left and right a fair bit before it would start moving the cables. But now I have all the gears. Shifter feels great, so can't complain. So a bit more progress in the car today. Um, did this off camera, but touched up a little bit of the radiator. Um, I mounted fans. I have two ball fans one 13 inch and one 11 inch and they fit just perfectly in fact that stock core support brace slips right between them um, the big problem I'm having now is um, now the alternator connector is in the way so it actually I don't even know if it shows up collides and I can't push the radiator back to its proper position um, if I take this out then the radiator will sit in its proper position. So it's just a matter of, well, I'm probably gonna have to end up potting that connector and running a remote mounting connector somewhere else. Um, Cause what actually is happening, uh, if I can't even think, I don't even think I can get it on video. The connector runs into the fan, not the radiator. And this fan is mounted as low as it can go. So I couldn't, mount it any lower to get the clearance for that sadly so um, I'll check Toyota's catalog see if there's anything else that has a chance of fitting that has a, the plug in a different spot but I'm most likely just gonna have to pot that connector so now that we have cooling fans in place I'm just gonna wire them up I'm just going to take you back off of the stock RAV4 connectors um, I technically the circuit for the main rad pan is slightly too small for what the spall needs it needs a, it wants a 40 amp 
this is only fused for 30. Um, so I'm going to try it, and if it blows, I'll have to rerun a circuit. Not the end of the world, um, but we'll cross that bridge. But for now, I'm just going to uh, depin the old fans and just crimp them onto the new spall. Alright, so obviously that was pretty quick. Um, I'll turn them on and see how they flow. Sounds and looks like they flow pretty well. Um, there's a vacuum pretty much anywhere up here, so that's great. I'm just going to zip tie them out of the way, and then you can move on to the next thing. Alright, so next on the list, we're going to fix that uh, alternator connector issue. Unfortunately, uh, just due to the shape of this engine bay, that does mean I have to pull the radiator out. So you may be wondering what the hell am I doing with this? My original thought was if I could get the connector off, I could move it. The issue is, this is what the connector looks like inside. Um, these three I could have relocated, but this is kind of crimped on to a weird spot. Uh, this isn't a 2G or 2AR alternator, but it'll serve the purpose for this discussion. Um, but this is a really, really bulky connector. Um, so yeah, that would kind of suck. So what I'm doing instead is I'm actually potting the connector. So potting a connector, basically what that is is your um, soldering wires here to the connector itself. You're filling it with epoxy, make it sturdy. Then you can remote mount a connector somewhere else if you need to change the connector for some reason, like this, or if the stock connection is unreliable or whatever. So I'm going to do something like this and add a bracket to this bolt for this to mount. Then I'm going to change the plug on the car to match this. What if I just smacked your wires and bent them? I'm about to smack your head and bend it. So obviously the most reliable way to start this is with the $20 Amazon special uh, soldering iron and a Radio Shack solder. Make sure you get the Radio Shack stuff and not anything else. At this point, I'm going to match the connector because apparently I didn't realize this, they're actually the same shape. Um, the key is a little bit different, but they are the same shape wise. So I'm going to match them one to one. So like, don't forget the pin out. Alright, so the reason I chose that connector over the thousands of other connectors that are available, this factory connector already uses the same terminals. So I can just deep in from this connector, put it in, straighten this connector in the same pin location, and I'll be golden. These keys are always the hardest part. There we go. Okay. 
You don't need to pop them all the way out. I just think it makes it easier if I'm deepening the connector. swapped over to a different kind of connector all right so it's been about i don't know 16 hours or something 24 hours i don't know um it's nice and hard now the epoxy is all done curing um to the point where i'm comfortable cutting it off and installing it on the car zip tied these together for so they set in a good position just like that make a little bracket here Looks like it'll be pretty solid. And install is, of course, offset or removal. And I made a bit of the exhaust um, flex coupling, catalytic converter, and resonator. Um, quiets it down quite a bit. I'll insert a clip right now of what that sounds like. That's a lot better. Already. So here's that uh, alternator, so it's all potted, and then I just have it connected up here to the uh, whatever. Um, so I just have to kind of zip tie this or something out of the way so that I don't contact the header or something. Um, you saw I made the exhaust. Um, this is not done, but it's at least behind the car. Um, at a certain point, I'm going to cut it around here and attach like a muffler section. Uh, but I do have a resonator on now, so it should be quite a bit quieter than it was before. Um, at this point, what I've left to do before it's kind of roadworthy is um, install O2 sensors. And then I just have to extend about three wires to plug in my speedometer. At that point, the car is drivable um, in, in every sense of the word. Um, zip tie a few things out of the way, make sure nothing contacts. But other than that, we're almost ready to go. All right, so a little update on the exhaust. I went ahead and tucked it up a little nicer so there's more ground clearance there. The exhaust is no longer the lowest point on the car, which is nice. Um, it is a little tight back here, so it's not it's not currently hung right now, but it clears on its up from there. And I had it loop around here into a nice muffler. So I've yet to start it, so I want to tighten down the V-bands and give it a start, see how it sounds. Hopefully it's uh, quiet enough for now, at least.
I think that's good for now. Um, maybe I'll add more resonators or something at some point, but um, I'm kind of really tired of welding at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. So at this point, um, I just need to make it like a tip to come out the side, um, come out kind of by the bumper, because it currently just dumps straight out into the tire area, so that's no good. Um, that should be like a couple minute thing. I don't even need to fully weld that, honestly. Uh, but then I just need to have it come out kind of this area, which is kind of where the stock one went. Um, then I'll be done. So, final piece of the puzzle here is just the tip. I got it to barely stick out past the body. And it clears behind the wheel just fine. Um, and despite how close it is to the body, um, no amount of wiggling really makes it hit. It will a little bit, um, but I will actually end up hammering that part of the frame away because I don't want to remake this again. And uh, I don't want this to get hung up on rocks or something, so I made it really high rather than um, kind of in line with this. And I know it's a little uh, funny looking, but that's kind of the, the vibe I was going for. The original one had this like one and a half inch pea shooter coming out, um, which just looks funny. So I thought it was kind of uh, an ode to that. I'm just gonna leave it plain. I'm not gonna stick any tip on it or something. Um, just cause I actually kind of want it to look kind of goofy like this. So let's get some clips. I'm sure a lot of you guys are also familiar with Super Fast Matt, and if you've ever seen his video on why project cars never get finished, he has this timeline, and at one point, the car is complete enough to be drivable to Buffalo Wild Wings. I think I'm at that point, so I'm going to do that. But, I'm not a big fan of Buffalo Wild Wings. I like when my wings taste good, so instead, I'm going to go to Wingstop. Stop. Let's do a throwback to when this car was new. What do I have from 96? 1996. Ah, the Cure Wild Mood Swings. Why not? <laughs> simultaneously better than I expected and worse than I had hoped or the lack of power steering rather the full manual it's not bad but it kind of sucks Wait, 
was no uh, beat ups, but it is drivable to the nearest wings place. So a bit more progress on the AC of this thing. Um, surprisingly, I got the condenser to fit with this humongous oversized radiator. Um, it's about, um, I don't know, half an inch past where the bracket normally mounts. Um, I should be able to reuse this line, which goes to the dryer. The discharge line from the compressor to the condenser, I have the stock one. I have it banged out of the way here. It's very insanely tight to the alternator. And then under here, it's going, let's see if I can get that on camera, right next to the water pump, in between the water pump and AC compressor, and it'll mount just to the top of that. The line here. All right, so I've been working on the AC stuff. I've kind of found two options for this side of the line. Um, I can't remember what I've talked about so far in video, but the problem is that this line is an M24 by 1.5, and that's not a standard size. The standard sizes are M24 by two or M22 by 1.5. Anyway, so I haven't been able to find that fitting. Um, so I, I don't love this, but I had a number 10 fitting welded on here. Uh, the, the issue with this is that this line was metric. It was a M14 line uh, and you can't really, I haven't been able to find fittings for lines or even the hoses themselves. I've only been able to find half inch um, or five eighths and that's too far from 14 to be good. So um, I cut that off and welded on this number 10 fitting, which is a half inch hose. I can kind of just get this hose and stick it in there and route it wherever I need to. Um, this is reduced barrier AC hose, it's like the right stuff. Uh, the other solution, which I still don't love, but I like it a little bit better, um, the after around, I think July of 96, they switched away from this um, kind of bent hard line to this straight hard line. And I found out that the UAC replacement of this piece, um, it's the right thread and stuff, but it's actually an inch size hose. This is a number 12. So I don't have any number 12 fittings, but the, met, the measurements point themselves towards this being um, a number 12 fitting. Two options with this, I can either run an inline splice or cut this off and add a new ferrule to crimp on, which I would kind of rather do that um, rather than having the inline crimp in the middle of the hose. I'd rather have one piece of hose. So I am going to cut this fitting off. Um, if you cut along these slit, um, the ferrule, you can split it in half and usually tear the hose off. I've only been able to have success with brand new hoses if they're, you know, 20, 30 years old like all these other hoses. Um, it's just too hard to get the hose off. So we'll try that, um, see where that gets us. This is what, kind of what it looks like once you cut the ferrule off. Um, hopefully I should just buy a new ferrule, slip it onto this area, um, slide a new hose on, crimp it on, and have a fresh fitting. So it's interesting because I didn't realize these were tapered. Um, it starts out larger and then goes smaller, larger again. So it fits on pretty snug, but once you get it in, it feels like loose, but then, I don't know, it should be fine. This is literally the hose that came off it, so um, it should be in tolerance or whatever. So I'm not worried. Uh, I'll order some hose and some new fittings and a ferrule. I'm also going to use the fitting that I welded. I'm going to make two lines before I decide what I'm going to use. Um, I guess I'll pressure check both. Um, I'll hook them, hook them up, vacuum test it. If I can pass vacuum test with this, then I'll just get rid of the other piece. Um, I don't need it. The other kind of uh, kerfuffle with the setup, um, this AC hose, this is actually the original one to the car. Uh, at least when I bought it, I don't know if it's original. Original, original. Um, I cut it at some point and put this fitting on so I can attach it to the compressor. But this is, this. so this is a number 10 fitting, a reduced barrier, but this is not a number 10 hose. Uh, it's whatever the closest metric equivalent is. I think it's 12 millimeter. This is half inch. So it's incredibly tight, but I can get it on and off, um, especially with a little lube on it. It slides on pretty easy. 
So I might just run this as is. If not, I don't know what to do. Um, I haven't found this piece or anything like it with an American size hose yet. So I don't know, I might keep looking. I might just try to run this as is. All right, well, I have all the lines mocked up um, using the smaller size. I haven't ordered the larger fitting yet, but um, it's incredibly tight. Uh, let's see if I can get down and show you underneath, but there's the fittings. Let's see, fittings are there. The suction line goes straight up into the whatever. The discharge line is kind of really tight against the uh, firewall here, or course board, I guess. Um, I might bang that in with a hammer slightly or tweak the fitting a little bit more. But um, that goes. That line goes up here. Uh, really, let's see. Hugs right against the firewall, real tight, and plugs in right there. With that, I just need to take these over to the crimp shop um, to tighten them to, and I could potentially have AC today. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, because I don't have refrigerant, but I could at least do a leak down vacuum test, um, get that sorted out. All right, so I ran and got the lines crimped. Um, so I got that end and then both ends of this guy. So go install them and I can um, pull it down and see if it holds vacuum. At which point I could release refrigerant into it and if all goes well, I'll have working AC. So first things first, gotta install these. I, uh, I went ahead and put a brand new condenser in place. Um, so cause the old one was a little, the fins were all folded over and whatnot. So figured why not? So at this point, pretty much Everything in the AC is brand new. Um, the only thing I haven't installed yet I, is a dryer. I have it, I haven't installed it. So I'll do that, install the lines, pull it down, see what happens. pulled down for about 20 minutes um, that I don't see the gauges moving so that to me means that's holding vacuum of course um, so at this point I just have to switch this over to the RM34 tank uh, I guess I have just a small one um, then fill it and hope it's functional so we'll do that Okay, everyone is purged and stay relatively upright. And then we can reopen the valves. Okay, so I should be around 50 psi on the low side and around. 350 psi on the high side. It's about 100 ambient right now, um, so I'll just keep flowing that in. Uh, all in 34. That uh, canister is pretty small. 
All right, so the AC definitely works. Uh, it's getting colder inside, but I'm just out of refrigerant. There's um nothing in here, so I just need to go get more. Um, it seems about halfway full, so I could probably get away with just one more can. I'll probably just buy two to be safe. All right, so I have it still charging. Um, it's I can't seem to get it up past 40 uh, PSI in the low. It needs to be up around 50, and the high side needs to be up around 300, and I'm only at 150. But with that in mind, regardless, I'm down to 55 degrees uh, Fahrenheit here on the AC temp. So, I don't know, maybe it's fine. Um, I know those pressures are kind of like a, a guide, I guess. Not necessarily a rule. Um, I, there's no possible way this compressor is uh, undersized. Um, it might be spinning too slow right now, but, um, you know, at idle. But if I shake the can around, I can get it to jump up to around 60 PSI. Right, so that is technically out of spec for the pressures, but I got about the right amount of refrigerant based on the factory specification of the car. It's around 1.6 pounds. I put about three cans of the 12 ounces. That's about 1.6 pounds, give or take. So uh, I'm going to pull down to around 54 degrees in the cabin, so I'll take it. Um, I'll roll with that. Uh, if I need to adjust this later, I can. It's not a huge deal to hook up AC gauges to it. But I'm not particularly worried. I feel like that's fine, personally. Um, I remember my MR2 being a little out of spec, and that's been ice cold ever since for around two years. It's possible that my Harbor Freight AC gauges uh, just kind of suck. With that, I actually have a tiny coolant leak on the heater hoses. I've got some constant tension spring clamp fittings and they're ever so slightly the wrong size. Uh, I think I ordered one size too large, so I need to get the next size down because there's a tiny leak there. They did not leak when I had uh, worm gear hose clamps on them, so I'm not, I don't think that there's anything wrong with the heater. So I do need to let this cool down, at which point I can take the spring clamp off. I think I'm just gonna slide it up out of the way, put the hose clamp back on because I can separate that, and at that point I'll go drive it around and make sure the AC is as well as it appears to be. I hope that there's no uh, major leaks. Uh, I might find some. I might not. But we'll cross that bridge if it comes down to it. The only real issue I ran into after everything was installed is that this condenser kind of runs into this uh, kind of runs into this screw clamp thing. So it is a little bit further forward than it's supposed to be. I'm not sure what to do about that at the moment. I don't know how bad it'll look once the hood's closed. Might as well try that. Um, it looks fine. I'm not too bothered by that. It is a little bit off on this side. There's a little bit of a wiggle there. But it's not really anything I'm too upset about. I might leave it. If not, I might be able to find some kind of plastic spring clip instead of having a screw with like a drywall looking anchor. This faded bumper is kind of bothering me right now, so I'm going to do something about it. Now with just this um, turtle wax stuff, it doesn't last very long. Uh, it's basically spraying WD-40 on it, which might even work better, honestly, in the long run. It kind of leaves a greasy film, enough to make this dark, but it's never permanent, right? Now what? I don't know. 